let's go over some of the techniques for mini rolling and why we'd be using mini rolling. Uh, for a surface like this, if we big roll it, you're going to get a lot of splatter coming off in between these rails on the other side, on this side, and it's going to make a big mess. So for most railings and spindles, we're going to want to use a mini roller. This is a wrought iron railing. We prepped this uh, in one of the other uh, presentations. Um, so it's oil paint, which means it's very sticky, and you've got to be very careful about uh, what you get it on. So I always have a bit of Varasol with me when I'm painting with oil paint, so that if I get a drop here or a drop on the stone, I can take a rag or a wire brush and quickly wipe it up. Um, as opposed to latex paints where I just have a hose around, if I get a bit of latex paint or a drip, I would go and wash it away. With oil paints, always have to have a bit of uh, thinner around, as this is the solvent for those oil paints. Okay. So mini rolling is pretty simple. You got a bunch of paint on your mini roller here, and you pretty much just get into all the spindles and the cracks. Takes a bit longer than big rolling, but gets the job done. You also have to have a brush with you to get into some of these more intricate spindle areas. You want to make sure you're moving systematically and always remembering the parts that you hit and the parts that you didn't. Good. Excellent, okay. And you'll develop a good competence for it as you get a bit faster. Get both sides here. Okay, great. And make sure I always have a bit of paint there on site, as mentioned, just in case I get a little drip over here, I take my rag and clean that up. Mini rolling is definitely very useful for spindles, for all sorts of different substrates like that. So we're going to practice doing some white balcony spindles here. Simply take your mini roller, hit the banister again. We want to use a mini roller here because if we use a big roller on this stuff, it's going to uh, pretty much splatter paint everywhere. But a mini roller is good. There's actually two types of mini rollers. There's like the fur ones and the foam ones. This is one of the fuzzy ones here. Uh, so the fur ones that can really get into a lot of good cracks. The foam ones can also push into some deep cracks. They leave a bit more of a, of a smoother finish uh, and they can push into the cracks very well, but they don't put quite as much paint on the surface. So personally, I like, uh, I like using both, but I like using these ones a bit better. So I'm gonna systematically sort of get into all my cracks there. Okay, good. And you can use the end of the mini roller like that, really even just as a brush to get in there. Very versatile tool. Always make sure to like level out any drip marks you leave. And watch out for drips that can accumulate in the corners. I almost still do my cutting first, but I do it with this mini roller instead. And we gotta get on this side of course and get all my cutting done underneath. Okay, good. I can also attach this mini roller to a pole to give me some leverage and make it move a bit faster, as such. So if I'm doing an area I can't reach quite as well, or just want to get a bit further off the substrate and get some leverage, this is always works pretty well too. It's a little bit tougher to get in there and do the detailed cutting work, but definitely lets you move fast from afar on some of these items. You know, it allows me to hit areas over here that I might not be able to reach if I'm on a ladder or for any other reason. Okay, good. And of course, if I need to use my brush to get into any other cracks that I can't hit with this, I'm gonna do that. But typically, I'll be hitting these spindles mostly with a mini roller.